And so my friend, Mary Chung March with us tonight on practicing prayer. Thank you for being with us, Mary. Well, thanks for having me. You know, after she read that bio, I was like, who is she talking about? Um, <laughs> so I know this, I would say if, you know, I don't live up to that hype, you can ask for your money back, but it's a free event. So you could always turn off your camera and pretend you can't hear me. Um, those are options. Well, it's good to be here with you this evening. Um, thank you to Pastor, Pastor Juana and Pastor Phil Nesta for inviting me to join you this evening. Um, I really commend you, church, for um, coming together on this Wednesday night to commit to walking in unity and practicing prayer and practicing many other things. There are so many other things you could be doing tonight and you chose to be here. So I'm grateful to be in this space with you. I'm going to be talking about practicing prayer. I know you've been walking through the Lenten devotional and she brought up a number of ways to practice prayer. And I'm going to focus on two, um, contemplative prayer and lament prayer. And if you're familiar with these things, it might just be a repeat of sorts, but we're going to practice them together. Um, and hopefully it's something that you will carry on in either personal spaces, corporate spaces, um, doing contemplative prayer and lament prayer. Um, I have a slideshow that I'm going to share. I'm really more technologically challenged than most people, I think. So if you'll be patient with me while I, I think I did it. Oh, and this is being recorded too. Well, I'm going to go to the next slide by hitting the arrow. So there's scriptural support for contemplative prayer. Some people call it centering prayer. These are a few. Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Pray without ceasing, um, meaning in our breathing, in our being, in all that we do, uh, we are praying. We are intentional about seeking God's presence in our every moment that we are alive. John 14, Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. I will send you a comforter, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth who will be with you always. And contemplative prayer is a prayer of consent for God's word and the Holy Spirit to work within. Psalm 46 says, be still and know that I am God. Psalm 27 says, my heart says to you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Galatians 5, since we live by the spirit, let us keep in step with the spirit. And Mark 1, again, Jesus, now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. So just going to give you a little background and how we're going to practice it together. Um, centering prayer, contemplative prayer, is basically a method of um, welcoming, welcoming the Holy Spirit, welcoming Jesus, welcoming God with us. Um, it deepens our relationship with Jesus. Um, to be in the presence and to acknowledge God is with us. So it's a consenting to his presence. It's not active prayer. Um, it is more um, or a way of surrendering. Um, and this is something I'd actually encourage you to try to do for 20 minutes, possibly every day. Um, I believe that it is kind of, it is transform it's been transformative for me to do. And so I'm just excited to share it with you, hoping that it would be just as transformative for you as well. So just to begin, there is, um, I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything, a sacred word. And so the idea of a sacred word actually is um, a word that reminds you or just kind of brings you back to your intention to consent to God's presence and action within. It could be God. It could be Jesus, Abba, Father. Um, it's not really a mantra. It's just a gentle reminder. The second thing I'd like to encourage you to do is to be comfortable. Um, it's a little harder to do if you have a lot of background needs, but it's still something you can try to do. A lot of times if there's background noise, I have four kids, so I hear them a lot. Um, you just kind of welcome the noise and not get irritated by it. Just say, okay. Um, I actually liken it to, um, I visualize myself sitting on just a beachfront or just a little, you know, piece of land and 
the stream or the river is flowing by and I just, whatever comes, it just goes down the river and I watch it go. Uh, three, when engaged with your thoughts, return ever so gently to the sacred word. Um, what that means is thoughts could be a body sensation. It could be a to-do list. It could be a feeling, a memory, all those things. If it comes into your mind while we're praying, like looking at the river, you just kind of let it go and return with your word of Abba Father or God or Jesus and to be bit brought back into the space of prayer. Four, at the end of the prayer period, we're going to just stay with our eyes closed for, it says a couple of minutes, it might be a minute. I know that we have kind of a truncated time here today, so um, it'll probably be a minute, but we're just going to stay in that silence, and um, I will read a scripture and close us in prayer. One image I'd love to leave with you also is sometimes when I engage in contemplative prayer, I start thinking about my to-do list, and then I get mad at myself for doing that. Um, just envision like a feather, and I wish I had one and a cotton ball. And if you just touch them together ever so gently, as gently as a feather to a cotton ball, just bring yourself back. Um, I want to just say a few things about this. Um, it's pretty normal to have distracting thoughts. You know, it rises up. Um, we're doing this to be in a time of silence with God. And nothing is expected of you. Like if you can just imagine being in the arms of God. So this is the format. And you know what, if it makes you feel better, you can turn your screen off. So you don't feel like anyone's watching you or um, So I invite you to just turn off your screen. I'm gonna open us in prayer, read Psalm 116, and you're gonna hear a piano and violin sound. And from that point for seven minutes, we're gonna give those seven minutes to God. Um, in seven minutes, you'll hear that same piano violin sound to indicate the end of our prayer time. And I'll give you one more minute to come out of that. And then I'll read a scripture and close in prayer. Um, before I do this, are there any questions? Do you want to put it in the chat or unmute and ask? I'm going to take that as there are no questions. So just, you know, if you can put both feet on the ground, get in a comfortable position. And we're just going to give the Lord these seven minutes and pray and say, Lord, here I am. Um, take a moment to just pick a word. And as you land on that word, it's just something to bring you back. And I'll open us in prayer. You'll hear a piano sound. We'll have seven minutes of silence. And then you'll hear the piano sound again and I'll lead you after that. It gets confusing with all the directions. Father, we come before you, your daughters, your sons. And we confess that we have not come to you as often as we would like. But Lord, we are here now. And we ask that you would meet us. In Psalm 116, it says, I love the Lord who listened to my voice in supplication who turned an ear to me 
on the day I called. Return my soul to your rest. The Lord has been very good to you. For my soul has been freed from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I shall walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. We will go into our seven minutes of contemplative prayer silence.
Psalm 139 says, where can I go from your spirit? From your presence, where can I flee? If I ascend to the heavens, you are there. If I lie down in Sheol, there you are. If I take the wings of dawn and dwell beyond the sea, even there, your hand guides me. Your right hand holds me fast. You formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My very self, you know. Abba Father, thank you for seeing us, for knowing us, for holding us, for meeting us. Amen. I invite you to take a minute if you have a piece of paper just um, take one minute to think about what do you feel what do you sense from the Lord maybe write a note to yourself you could start it out dear Mary or put your name in there for yourself and see what comes out. So just take a few moments and just write something down. Thank you for praying with me. Um, I invite you to continue to do contemplative prayer and spend time with the Lord just in his presence. Um, you'll find that the fruit of the prayer time doesn't often happen during the prayer time. It happens later, later in your day, later in life. So I encourage you to continue to do that. The second form of prayer that I'm going to be talking about, and I'm going to share my screen, um, is the lament prayer. So we're going to be transitioning a little bit. Lament is the language of the suffering. Lament recognizes the struggle, struggle for life and cries out for justice against existing injustice. Why is there a Christian's call for justice? Why does Jesus call for justice? Why does God call for justice? You know, at the heart of it, um, it's because we're called to be the hands and feet of Jesus. When he calls for justice, he's calling for the wrong to be made right, for the hurting to be healed, for people made in his image to no longer be sinned against, that we would stop sinning against one another, his children. The imagery I have is, as I think about my own kids and I watch them fight, it, it breaks my heart. And I wonder if God watches us and 
it breaks his heart sometimes. And also the word justice is not a dirty word. It's a beautiful word. You know, another phrase we could use in the place of justice is doing good. You know, as a covenanter, we know that a founding father of pietism, August Hermann Franca said, Christians live for God's glory and neighbor's good. As we live for God's glory and neighbor's good, how do we live for a neighbor's good if we don't know our neighbor? We're called to be the hands and feet, to live out the great commission and the great commandment. And the other part of the other good news alongside the good news of Jesus is we actually don't have to go overseas. The world has come to us. As we look at the populations and the people around us, the world has come to us. And so then I ask, as we seek to live for God's glory and neighbor's good, how well do we know our neighbor, you know, our Asian American, our black, brown, indigenous neighbor, and how do we wish and live for their good? And that's the gospel. And that is justice. And that is walking in unity. I look at this gathering of people and I know the past two years have been really difficult. It's even more of a reason to stand in solidarity with one another, to be there for each other, to be the presence, the hands and feet of Jesus to one another. Just the weight, the heaviness, COVID, the goodbyes, loss of life, loss of dreams, loss of jobs collective, personal grief, heartbreaking stories around immigration, anti-Asian hate. You know, as a Asian American Pacific Islander, I'm Korean American and um, it's been a hard two years. And I'm just gonna quickly make mention of this, but it, it has been a season of great lament. Um, where I, there, there are more anti-Asian hate crimes recorded in 2021 versus compared to 2020 when COVID started. So it's really not slowing down. It's getting worse. And um, that's heavy, that's hard. Uh, we're told that we brought the virus or we should go back to our country, but this is my country. I was born and raised here. Um, Asian American history is American history. There's murdered and missing, there's too many murdered and missing indigenous women and girls. Our hearts broke when George Floyd's life was taken, Breonna Taylor our black, brown, Asian, indigenous brothers and sisters known and unknown, recorded and unrecorded. Uh, the list is really long. The anvils are heavy. So this is the season we're in. It, it seems unrelenting. Um, on a personal note, I, I lost my father and a grandmother during this COVID period. And I've gone before the Lord and I say, Lord, I am your vessel, but I'm cracked. I'm struggling under the weight. And so in some sense, I wanna ask us, what if we all agreed to just pause and attend to the wound? What if we all agreed to do a little less and be a little more, to be attentive to our wounds, to be attentive to each other's wounds, that we would seek to be the family and be the friend and then be on mission together. And we have some healing to do. Um, there's a book called The Body Keeps Score. Um, and it's just true. Uh, we carry it around these wounds, the inside wounds in our bodies. And, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes I just, it's really inconvenient. So I just wanna shove it down and ignore it, but it keeps popping up in different ways, health problems relationship struggles, anger problems, um, it eventually shows up the aching shoulder, um, the pit in your stomach, can't sleep. 
And so a visual I had was, and I've shared this in other places, but if, you know, I'm on mission, like I want to help you, I want to do stuff, but you're moving tomorrow. And I said, I'll be there to help you. And I show up at your door and I knock and you open the door and you see, I have a big slash in my arm and a gushing wound. And I'm like, I'm here to carry your boxes out. I, what would you say to me? You would say, go home, attend to your wound. And so how are we attending to the wound inside? How are we addressing it? Lament prayer is such a prayer for this kind of heaviness. Um, it's an act of honesty, honest prayer. It's an act of worship. Professor Rob Mathia said, says, lament is an act of faith, not faithlessness, because we believe in a God who hears us. He hears the cries of his children, and we know that he can act. It connects God to our struggle. It can be a transformative practice that names and gives us biblical examples. Like in Psalm 10, you find the lament, why, O oh Lord? Why? Why do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? Psalm 88 says, Lord, you are the God who saves me. Day and night I cry out to you. May my prayers come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. I am overwhelmed with troubles and my life draws near to death. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like one without strength. Here are some laments from a congregation in the LA area. People who have, have laments and wrote their own. I'm gonna ask Pastor Juana to read this first one. Oh, that is not it, excuse me one second. Amen. You once took a people through the wilderness, through the wild, to the through the wilderness into a land of milk and honey. But I am a stranger, an alien, a forever foreigner in my own land. Where are you from? How is your English so good? This is supposed to be the promised land, one nation under God. Why am I still homeless? And if these aren't my people, who is? Do I have a people or will, or will I forever be alone? Still in this strange and weary land, I will trust you. We will trust in you for you are a God who knows homelessness. You are a God of the wilderness. Another prayer written. Oh Lord, am I not good enough? Is my skin not good enough? Is my skin so dark that it offends? Or is my hair so unruly and nappy that it requires a law to be tamed? Oh Lord, where are you? Show me your mercy. Show me your beauty so that I can see mine. Because after all, I am made in your image. You, God, have the power to bring us to our knees and change our ways, yet you allow this injustice to perpetuate from one generation to the next. I know that lament prayers aren't often found at church, but it is biblical. And it takes forms of confessional lament, despair lament, protest lament. Lament prayer is applicable in healing and doing work around racial trauma and racial righteousness. It can be a practice of walking in unity. 
It opens up emotional spaces that sometimes we don't always want to venture. It connects God to our struggle of walking in unity. It's honest. And it brings us together. Lament prayer accounts as doing something. And two more thoughts. As we are going to engage in a practice of lament prayer, a lot of times I have had people ask, but what is next? You know, what, what are we going to do about it? And I think what lament prayer does is it actually connects our heart to our head. It connects us one to another, and it helps us see one another. I feel like the more we can get our knowledge from our head about the truth of scripture around some of the issues we have of walking in unity down from our head to our heart, it changes things. When we're in relationship with one another, when we see each other as family, when we're on site with one another, it changes things. It leads us into honest spaces to walk in unity. So I'm gonna lead us in um, just one prayer of confession saying, Lord, together in our hearts of walking in unity, we want to pray this prayer of confession before you. I know you're muted, but please out loud with yourselves muted, join me in this prayer of unison. Forgive us, most gracious God, for what we have done to bring pain to your beautiful world. Our hard and unkind words, our careless and thoughtless deeds, our lack of compassion and reluctance to render aid when it was in our power to help. Amen. So before I sign off, I think you got these slides in um, the email perhaps, but I'm just going to show it up here. There are three activities you can do with your groups that you're with. And if you're alone, this is something you can journal about. What am I noticing or feeling? What am I wondering about? What is welling up in me? What is the Holy Spirit's invitation? What am I not seeing? What am I needing to surrender to the Lord? The second activity, and Mona, you can let me know if they have printouts of these or if you want me to email it to you so that they can have it. Yeah, they have copies. They have copies. Is to write your own lament prayer. So it starts with a direct address to God, a statement of complaint, sin, or problem, an appeal for a specific action, and a vow to praise God or trust him. And as you guys are spending time to write it, please share it. Please give voice to it. Please let someone hear it so that someone can respond, I hear you, or Lord, hear our prayers. And then in closing, the third activity is we're committed to walking together. If we're brothers and sisters here on earth, we got to be brother. If we're brothers and sisters in heaven, we got to be brothers and sisters here on earth. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm sure when we get to heaven, God's going to know. Were you brothers and sisters on earth? Like you are now in heaven. We don't even have to say anything. He knows. And so how we live now matters. Your voice matters. How you walk alongside one another matters. Walking in unity matters. And I am so grateful for this time. Thanks for letting me be here. Um, I did run long, I see. And so Juana, I don't know if, um, how about I'll just pray for everyone and you can tell me what to do or how to jump off. Lord, because we know who has the final say, in the midst of hard things, heavy things, Lord, we have hope. We know you are the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, we love you. 
and we are seeking to love you and love others as you have commanded. Help us to walk in unity. Help us to lean in. Help us to practice prayer by spending time with you one-on-one -on -one and corporately with one another. We give this time to you. Bless this community. Thank you for their hearts and the ways that you are working. We pray it in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Mary, I can't thank you enough. Um, what a beautiful reminder of what we need to be doing daily, right? I think we all know as Christians, we need to be praying, but being able to understand that type of prayer and that there are different type of prayers, um, prayer and solitude, I think for some is difficult, but so important so important and so it was just a good reminder tonight i think for all of us that we need to be spending that time in solitude with god and what a beautiful um time of lament um i'm just in tears over here um shocker but um you know as we tend to the wound it's hard it's hard and as we um, are in our groups right now, um, there are three activities. You can choose to do one. You can be go-getters and do all three, or you can do one and then do two as homework. It's such a good opportunity for us to just spend time with God and really um, get into um, that time alone with God. So um, I love how Mary said, we need to tend to the wound, do a little less, and be a little more. I mean, I don't know, I'm going to take that to the bank because I think that's like, you know, something we need to be reminded of on the daily. So, um, and, you know, we talk about justice a lot. And I do think that some, as Mary said, think of it sometimes as a dirty word. But if we begin to retrain our mind and understand the beauty of it, it really is a beautiful word. And it is doing good in all aspects. So as we go into our groups, or if you are home doing a watch party, or if you're logging on later, please spend some time understanding and being in prayer, but also understanding um, prayer of lament and how as Christians, we are called to walk in unity with one another and be able to live um, a life of justice just as Jesus did. So. Mary, again, Phil and I and our church, we cannot thank you enough for taking the time. We know you are busy and there are so many things that you have um, going on and so much that you are um, uh, leading and doing, and yet you took time to be with us tonight. And we are so grateful, eternally grateful for your time and your wisdom and just your heart. So thank you, Pastor, for being with us and for shepherding us tonight in this very important um, practice. So I am going to open up um, the, I'm going to stop recording.